So when I first joined the lab, uh, she was continuing doing this stuff. She was doing other phage RNAs, uh, well, Q-beta, I think, and she was doing rebinding experiments and that kind of stuff, and kind of dicking around with this. And one of the problems was that R17 RNA, um, one criticism you could levy of that is that it's both a genome and a message. So it's special. It's like polio. Okay. Excuse me? It's like polio. Right. One of the things that um, uh, Joan decided to do was a DNA phage. Okay? Right. And she chose T7 because T7 was unique because the early T7 messenger RNAs were stable. And you can actually P32 label those guys and run a gel and see bands on the gel. Right, this is before any of the cloning techniques or anything like that. So to be able to isolate a P32 labeled messenger RNA from prokaryote was a big deal. Okay, in T7 you could do that. So she was going to do the ribosome binding sites on T7. Mm -hmm. She never did it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Rick Kramer, who came in at the same time, sequenced the ends and found out that the ends were the same on all of these five messages, and that evolved into turning out that they were the same because they the thing was synthesized as a big one precursor with hairpins in between each one and RNAs 3 Cleveland. My job, there was a paper that turned out to be not true uh, that said that the reason that phage T7 didn't grow in male E. coli was that uh, the ribosomes didn't recognize the messenger RNA. This was a big deal because people had discovered sigma factor, right? So everything was about factors that went and modified the specificity of all the enzymes that did transcription or translation. So translational control was the big hypothesis. So T7 is supposed to not grow in male coli because of translational control. So uh, I was supposed to investigate that. That turned out to be not true. But in the process, I did a bunch of... Um, did a bunch of T7 stuff and I uh, got hooked on viruses. So Niles was purifying phage T7 RNA polymerase. And mm -hmm. I had put together a couple in vitro transcription translation systems. So I was a good in vitro translation guy. He was a good T7 RNA polymerase guy. So I got T7 RNA polymerase from him, plugged it into my system, and it worked great. T7 RNA polymerase on T7 DNA makes discrete transcripts. Once again, this is before all the genetic stuff. We wanted to know how those transcripts map. So he gave me the RNAs and I translated them in vitro. And based on what we knew of the genetic map, we could uh, map the RNAs based on what proteins were made by each RNA. And that, by God, is where the T7 promoter and the T7 mm -hmm. terminator come from. That's, That's in right. all the pet vectors that everybody uses yeah, and yeah. all that stuff. So how did Studier, Bill Studier got involved well, with that? Well, Bill Studier, Bill Studier is the king of T7. Right. Okay? He did his, I can't believe I know all this crap, <laughs> you know? Of course you do. You uh, lived You lived it. Jeez. Oh, it's so, it's so cool. Bill Studier did his, must have been a postdoc with Norman Davidson at Caltech. Mm -hmm. uh, um, working out, um, oh, now I, no, okay. I course chop the onions. Screw it, they'll be fine. Um, oh, what were you <laughs> supposed to do, fine chop them? Yeah, that's all right, I like them this way. So, um, uh, 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 Bill was uh, working on physical chemical methods for uh, determining molecular weights on DNA, and one of them is that I don't understand completely, but apparently if you ban DNA in a cesium chloride gradient, gradient, you can actually get information about the molecular weight from the width of the band. Hmm. Don't ask me. I've, I've looked at the paper. That was published in like 1964, and then he got a job at Brookhaven National Laboratory. Right. He disappeared for five years. Okay? And in 1969, there's a paper published, I think, in Virology. This was before JVI, right? Man, Virology was the virology premier was journal. The original journal. Yeah. Okay, 1969, 
comes comes this paper called the genetics and physiology of phage T7. Okay, <laughs> that's that's an exact quote of the title. Can you imagine okay? publishing a paper with that title nowadays? <laughs> and he and he is the sole author. All right, and it describes the isolation, complementation mapping, and recombination mapping of 400 amber mutants of phage T7. Wow. Okay, and <clears throat> defines uh, 19 or 20 essential genes maps them all, all right, and then does uh, protein synthesis, time courses, and uh, categorizes all the mutants with respect to whether or not they can make DNA mm -hmm. or late proteins and all this stuff, and just basically it's the whole thing, all right. Just an amazing piece of work, and that was the beginning of uh, Bill Stadier and T7, and he worked exclusively on T7 for a, a number of years, and that ultimately for quite a number of years, and gave me all his mutants, right? So I had this complete genetic collection for T7, and my problem morphed into something of trying to figure out what genes in the phage were responsible for this host restriction. So I went through the whole collection by the time I was done. Hmm. Uh, and I learned the power of, of genetics with uh, working with phage. And I've been trying to do, I've been trying to be the Bill Studier of T7 ever since uh, of vaccinia, vaccinia ever, right. ever since graduate school. The problem is vaccinia has got 200 genes and, and uh, takes 20 times as long to grow and I'm not Bill Stadier. How many genes <laughs> How many genes does T7 have? Um, it's 40 KB. So that's, uh, it's, uh, it's 25, 30 genes, so something like that. 10 times smaller than vaccinia. Yeah. Right, and it, you know the life cycle's over in 20 minutes. You do a plaque assay, yeah, it does and it, you yeah. either stick the plates in the incubator for three hours, okay, mm -hmm. or you stick them on the bench overnight. If you stick them in the incubator overnight, the, it's shot the next day. I used to start an overnight every day before I went home. I didn't know what the experiment was going to be the next day, okay, <laughs> but I started overnight just in case because I knew I'd think up something. In the meantime. So. Uh, Ed purified RNA polymerase and characterized it. I did all this other T7 stuff. Ed went to Buffalo. I went to ICRF. I came back to learn vaccine. I did polyoma there. I didn't like polyoma. I came back and decided I would be the Bill Studier of vaccinia mm -hmm. virus. And I came to Stony Brook to learn that from Joe Case. Okay. okay. You did a postdoc with Joe Cates? Right. It's a combination of Joe Cates <coughs> and Bill Bauer. Okay? That's before, Bauer, that was also before going Norman to... Davidson uh, graduate. Excuse Bill me. Bauer was, yeah? Yeah. That was before or after UK? That was after. Basically, UK, I learned a lot there. I had a good time, all that kind of stuff, but there wasn't a career in it. Mm -hmm. All right? So I had, to, I had to figure out what I was going to really do. Okay? And I just decided for a variety of reasons that I was going to... I was going to be the geneticist for vaccinia. That made sense to me. Okay, and so I went to Stony Brook to learn that. The minute I landed, Niall started recruiting me to Buffalo. Hmm. Okay, and uh, long story short, I went after a year at Stony Brook. I went to Buffalo. Sometime after that, uh, Niles, who was working on tetrahymena transcription, uh, ran into funding problems. So he did a mini sabbatical in my lab. He was frustrated by the fact that there was no segment of vaccinia where we had a, a complete grip on the transcription, translation, genetics, and everything else. And I had all these mutants and a lot of evidence that in this fragment in the middle, of the D fragment, 16 kilobase fragment, there was a variety of activities. So if you actually had detail about that, you would have a lot of detail about the virus. So he used his sabbatical to fine map my mutants in that fragment and ultimately uh, became a vacciniologist. That morphed into a grant to do the DNA sequence of that chunk of DNA. So this is early 80s, and together we sequenced a 16 kilobase piece of DNA. That's the figure that's in your textbook. Hmm. That's Ed's in my work, mostly Ed, okay? He's the guy who did that. Okay, that sort of was the first definition of what vaccinia looks like. Okay, so here's the punchline. Nice. This is where all the storytelling started. <laughs> <clears throat> when Ed and I got that grant, we decided to reward ourselves. Uh -huh. Okay, this was his idea. And we go out to this just 
off the wall meeting in California, okay, San Francisco. And we flew out and it was a meeting. Uh, the only thing I remember the meeting is that uh, Harold Varmus talked and Joe Gallo talked. And it was some genetics type meeting. We're flying back on the airplane. Niles is sitting next to me. And he says, I wonder, okay, remember he's got a history of T7, and so do I, and he purified the RNA polymerase, and now we're both Pox guys, right? And Ed says to me, I wonder if you, uh, at, at this point, we knew that we could clone genes in vaccine and express them. He said, I wonder what would happen if you clone T7 RNA polymerase in vaccine. And put another gene under control of a T7 promoter. And I said, that's stupid. <laughs> Why would anybody want to do that? Okay? And he just wouldn't let it go. So he got back and he called Bill Stadier, because uh, we both knew Bill, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. He said, Bill, can I have the polymerase clone? Sure. <clears throat> and he called Bernie Moss, because Bernie Moss had all the insertion factors. And Ed recounts this story as saying, Bernie, I like these insertion vectors because this is what I want to do. And Bernie says, oh, that's a great idea. Why didn't anybody think of that before? And Ed's <laughs> saying, dude, okay, I thought of it, okay, here I am. This is before. And uh, those were the early days when Bernie was more aggressive than he is now. And so... He did it faster than Ed. Yeah. Ed doesn't okay. get any credit for it, right? No, Ed got, uh, uh, Bernie put him on the paper. He's like mm. second author. Yeah, oh, okay. And he's, uh, and he's, uh, I think he's on the patent. Okay, I don't think they get anything out of the patent. But, Vaccinia T7 is Ed's. That came out of his, his head. Okay? And, and look at the, the evolution of that. We're both just screwing around with T7 at Yale, mm. okay? And then we go to Buffalo, of all places, okay? And we're screwing around with Vaccinia. He winds up working on Vaccinia because he loses his tetrahymena money, all right? And then we're just shooting the breeze. And he says, I wonder. And that's just spawned a whole technology. It was a day when you could do that, you know? You could just screw around. You lost your money. You could screw around with something else and find something. Now there's no more luxury of that. Well, <clears throat> I'm still screwing around. Okay? I'm fortunate. But I'm still doing basic science. I'm still screwing around. And one of the reasons that I want to do my bit on study section is that I think one of the things that the study section people can do is keep that alive. You know? When we talk about they who makes all these funding decisions and stuff, that's us, okay? No, we don't make funding decisions. Oh, not right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> but the grants that come through, we evaluate and we give them a score. If we give them all, if, we, if some basic science grant comes in, we give them ones. Can't just going to fund that. It's a good story. Well... You Thank have you. lots of stories. And Thank we, you. That's why that's, uh, I, I, I love telling those. That's stories. why I, we should sit down uh, sometime and have each of us tell our stories because we've stories. been yeah. around a while. And for the uh, new people in the field, it's instructive. Great stories. Now you have to cook. Yeah, I'm just kind of. Uh, I hope you're not too hungry. I'm just kind of pissing my way through yeah, this. Fine. It's like what you did with Vaccinia, right? <laughs> this is not rocket science. This one.